What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and this is eBay Miniature Rescues. Today, we're going to save some cyborgs. So there I was the other day playing a friendly game of Warhammer 40k. The day was warm so we decided to play on a ping pong table in my garage with the door open. It was very refreshing and something I've greatly missed in the last year. I was playing Orcs and I was up against Necron. The game was fun, as it usually is, and we both did pretty well, but something got me thinking. If a Necron army, which is made up primarily of robot people, can heal themselves in a game, maybe there's some weirdo orky reason that orcs can do that too. Something I've noticed about orcs in general, and especially in 40k, is that they take on a ton of properties of other armies, and usually in the best or at least the most entertaining ways. The real reason I want to know is because I have a feeling I'll be facing Necrons again in the future, so I want to be a little more prepared for the long game. But also because I found a squad of five orcs on eBay for eight bucks, and they got robot legs. This conversion and playing a game against robots makes me want to have a cyborg orc army that regenerates. Now that might be a bit of a stretch, but let's take a look in the book and see what we can come up with. After some digging, I came across this little entry. Cyborg body. Cyborg body. So, cyborg, orc, cyborg. Starting off with the puns right away. If a cyborg model loses a wound, then we get an extra roll to see if we get that point of damage back. It's such a small thing, and in the big picture of a game with tons of models, it might not make much of a difference, but I feel like that's a bit beside the point. I can create a custom band of orc knobs that are all super awesome and cyborg-y. It's been something I've wanted to do for a while, and the rules in the book give it a thumbs up. So it might not be an important rule, but it rewards you for converting your models and having fun, and I really appreciate that. Most of these models are converted regular troops. Some of them have had some head swaps with larger knob heads. For the most part, they look pretty good. I think I could add a little more to the leader model to make him look a little cooler, but other than that, I feel like I got really lucky with this squad. $8 is hard to beat for five knobs with Cromlech conversions. Speaking of which, I'm only guessing that these are Cromlech parts. Let's check eBay real quick and see how much it would cost to do this conversion just by yourself. It's pretty straightforward. Most orcs come in main body pieces, so torso, head, arms, legs. So it's easy enough to swap one item out for another. Oh yeah, these legs are definitely Cromlech. And at their cheapest on eBay, you can get a set for eight bucks, which is what we paid for the completed models, so not too bad at all. There are also other bits like cyber torsos and heads, and I'm sure the arms are around here somewhere too. So you can really go all in on these cyborgs if you want to. The paint is actually too thin in most places, which is why it looks like this. But the good news for us is I'll just keep painting and we should be fine. For the models that still had some gray plastic, I went ahead and primed over those parts using Badger Stino Res Green. As far as painting goes, I'm going to paint them like I paint all of my orcs. A mostly grim dark look with a deep purple brown leather and Incubi Darkness cloth. And for the metallics, rusty and grimy. In particular, I do want to show you one of my absolute favorite ways to apply rust to metallics. Using surface tension and two opposing chemicals, you can get a really realistic and random rust effect and it's super easy. Let's start with getting a skin tone established and then we can fill in the details. 
Like I said, Stino Res Green Primer is a pretty awesome way to start off Orc Skin. It's right in the middle as far as tone goes, so there's lots of room to work on either side of the scale. Since these models have some paint on them, I'm going to do my best not to overspray the model so I can preserve that detail. Since the paint was already pretty thin, this light layer from the airbrush covers nicely and puts those models back on track. Next up, I'm going with a strongly pigmented pink flesh tone through the airbrush. I personally find that there are certain brands of paint that work extremely well for this and some that don't. For example, Vallejo Game Air Light Flesh Tone needs at least two full coats to look pink, while Scale 75's Light Flesh Tone comes out strong with color and coverage. This doesn't apply to all of their paints, but pink flesh tones in particular have always been a bit troublesome, so something to keep in mind. Luckily, these models with cyborg bodies are mostly metal, so a lot of what I'm trying to accomplish will be very noticeable and hopefully something you will enjoy as much as I do. I'm using Vallejo Metal Color for this. Its coverage is always amazing and the shine is really nice. Blue for the cloth bits highlighted by adding a little white into the mix and leather in Scale 75's Armuckles Brown, one of my favorites. Honestly, I'm trying not to overthink these guys. Partially because there are times when you need to have fun, and there are times when you need to push yourself. I have an orc army, and it does look a certain way, so I need to keep that aesthetic. I can take certain opportunities to practice blending, particularly on arms and the face, and try out a few new things to see if I like doing something a little different than last time. Each new unit, and especially one that takes advantage of a weird rule, is a perfect opportunity to create even more of a custom narrative for your army. I'm gonna call this squad the Blue Tooths. I'm gonna give them a little tinge of blue in their teeth and they will be their own little five-man specialty squad of cyborgs. If I want to use one as a boss in another squad, I can do that and break up the gang. The most important thing to remember is that cyborgs is a really bad pun. So, Bluetooths is the only real name that these can fall under. They're half machine, so Bluetooth. And they have blue teeth, so you know, Bluetooths. Before we actually get to painting those teeth and all, we need to go over the sweet rust effect. I'm going to start with a liberal coating of brown enamel wash. I want this to make up the base layer of rust and grime, so it's easy enough to just slap it on everything. It's okay if it gets on other parts of the model, brown is still a good color for orcs, pretty much goes with everything we already have going on, and in this stage it looks like dirt, so that's not too bad. The second step is to clear away some of the grime and shape that rust. I'm using dollar store makeup remover brushes for this. A perfect application for these and much better than using Q-tips. No loose hairs on your model. I've always hated that with Q-tips. I end up taking video of the final model and seeing the little hairs catching light. It just drives me nuts. Now, you don't want to take too much away, but if you are having a hard time removing some of the enamel, just dip your brush into some odorless mineral spirits. This will reactivate the wash and take it away really quickly. And more importantly, prime the surface of the model for our next step. Water and oil doesn't mix, right? Right. So if I use a water-based acrylic paint over the top of an oil-based paint, then they should repel each other. This is exactly the point of doing rust like this. The acrylic rusty ink that I'm using doesn't want to settle with the enamels or the mineral spirits. So it spreads and beads up in really interesting ways. You can push through the enamels and force the acrylic to stick so there's still control over the paint, but it also looks really good in certain areas and randomly settles. This has been my go-to for quick bright rust for a while now and I really like the way it looks. It just has kind of a natural feel to it and adds a ton of contrast to these models. 
To go a step further, you can also come in with a lighter rust color and give a little boost of color in certain areas. It's completely up to you how far you want to take it and how much time you want to spend on your models. For me, these are fun little rescue projects that I can experiment on and try out techniques. I want them to look good enough for my army, and having a little extra built-in story gives me a great reason to bring them right into the fold and use them in a game. In the end, I spent about 30 minutes with each of these models, doing them in an assembly line fashion. A nice and quick job that brings out a little creativity. A few more highlights and just a little bit more blue under the teeth, and here we are. Oh yeah, and I popped these guys off of their original bases and put them onto these Duncan Luca scrap bases. This really took these models to the next level, and I cannot wait to drop these on the table and see what they do. I'm sure I'll be playing 40k again pretty soon. I just hope my new Bluetooth cyborgs can dish out some rusty damage and potentially heal a little bit and keep me in the game a little longer. Hopefully this has inspired you to dig a little deeper into your favorite rulebook. There could be something in there that gives you just enough of a push to swap out a head or some limbs. Just enough permission maybe. Either way, I'm sure you'll have a good time just reading over the army again. Until next time, I do hope you enjoy this epic squad of custom Bluetooths. Thank you again for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you like something about this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video.